Good morning dear students I am Ms Nidhi Singh and in today's lecture I will discuss about the major problems of economic planning In the last two lecture I discussed about the economic planning introduction features objective and rationales of economic planning So let's start with today's lecture After independence India decided to go ahead in the development of industrial economy in a planned way The planned progress has been slow and there are various causes which were responsible as you can see there are several factors several problems of economic planning let's start with these problems number one is rivalries of state second neglect of private sector third dependence on foreign collaboration four no consideration for rising prices and the last one is unrealistic plan let's start with number one point that is the rivalries of state as the plan started every state periodically proved a rival for the other each state wanted to get maximum money from the center and also tried to see that maximum projects were allocated to them second point is neglect of private sector though in each plan it was clearly mentioned that public and private sector must go hand in hand and both were complementary not contradictory to each other yet unfortunately private sector was not allowed to play its role in fact too much emphasis was given to public sector because some indian leadership felt that public sector should be given more and more priority as compared to the private sector because it was felt that concentration of wealth in few hands was bound in result to exploitation next point is dependence of foreign collaboration completion of most of our project was dependent on foreign collaboration for successful completion the nation either needed technical support or foreign exchange next point is no consideration for rising prices throughout the plan period prices goes up the planner while approving the cost of project took into consideration only prevailing prices and failed to take into account the rising price which upset the whole outlay creating serious dislocation problems and slowing down the planned work next point is unrealistic plan then another difficulty is that our planner became too much ambitious they wanted to improve the lot of people as quickly as possible as they could in a bid to do so they just fixed high targets which were really so high that even near approximation was not achieved thus there was a problem of the gap between fixed target and real achievements so it was all about the problems of economic planning in the next slide we will discuss about the planning commission planning commission the planning commission was set up by resolution of the government of india in march 1950 in pursuance in pursuance of declared objective of the government to promote a rapid rise of standard of living of the people by efficient exploitation of the resources of the country increasing production and offering opportunities to all for employment in the services of the community the planning commission was charged with the responsibility of making assessment of all resources of the country augmenting deficient resources formulating plans for the most effective and balanced utilization of resources and determining priorities mr jawaharlal nehru was the first chairman of the planning commission the first 5 year plan was launched in 1951 and two subsequent 5 year plans was formulated till, till 1965 where there was a break because of the indo pakistan conflict two successive year of drought devaluation of currency a general rise on prices erosion of resources disrupted the planning process and after three annual plan between 1966 to 1969 and the fourth five year plan was started in 1969 the eighth five year plan could not take off in 1990 due to the fast changing political situation at the center and the year 1990 to 1991 and 1991 to 1992 was treated as annual plans the eighth plan was finally launched in 1992 after the initiation of structural 
adjustment policies. The planning commission has to make periodic assessment of all resources in the country, boost up insufficient of resources and formulate plans for the most efficient and judicious utilization of resources. Let's discuss the features of planning commission. Number one feature is it is permanent autonomous advisory and expert body. Second point, planning commission has not executive responsibility. Its main objective is to assess the resources and need of the economy and then to formulate the development plans in consultation with ministries of government of India and the state government. Planning commission has to suggest the parties for the developments. The national development council give the final approval to the plans and the execution of plan lies with union and the state government. As we can see in the next slide, the organization of planning commission, the prime minister is the chairman of the planning commission, which who works under the guidance of national development council. The deputy chairman, the full time members of commission as a composite body provide advice, guidance to the subject division for the formulation of five year plans, annual plans, state plans, monitoring plans, programs and projects and schemes. Next topic is divisions under planning commission. There are three divisions under planning commission as we can see on the slide, administrative division, general divisions and subject divisions. Let's start with administrative division. They render services pertaining to administration, accounts, library, training and other general services to the employees of the commission. Second division is general division. These are concerned with certain aspects of the entire economy. For example, perspective planning, financial resources, international economics, plan coordination, state plan including multi-level planning, hill area development programs, labor employment and manpower, science and technology, project appraisal, etc. And the third division is subject division, which includes a specific field, a specific field of development, for example, agriculture, environment, forest, water resources, power and energy, industry and minerals, transport, communication, information, villages and small industries, rural development, education and health, nutrition and family welfare, housing and unwanted development, social development and women's program and backward classes. So it was all, all about today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the functions of planning commissions. Thank you, dear students.